Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about referencing scriptable objects within other scriptable objects, making it nested, and also using scriptable objects in your model behavior scripts. So first off, let's take a look at the script here, which is going to be relevant in the next video, shop event, which takes a reference to a shop scriptable object. You'll know it's a scriptable object because it'll always have this symbol over here. Um, you can see that you can select this from the drop down. And if we take a look at the actual script very briefly here, uh, let's see, shop event. Um, all you need to do to set a scriptable object is to declare uh, an instance of that class object. And as long as we have it set to public, we'll be able to choose that scriptable object from our game project. So it's really easy to take this asset file data um, which we have saved in our project as a physical file and reference it within our other scripts, model behaviors, or other scriptable objects. So an instance of where it would be a scriptable object referencing other scriptable objects here is the shop itself. So the shop has a shop inventory, which as you can see, um, has a list of these shop items. And the shop items have references to the actual game objects that we were talking about in the last video. So this cloud exists as a, ob a game item inside of our game. We might use it in a bunch of different places, but this is one place where we actually reference it as a sellable item inside of our shop. Um, so we can do the same thing with the fireball item, the servant item, or any other items we decide to create here just by going right click create items game item. And now this would be another uh, referenceable game item within our project. Um, so by doing this kind of thing, it becomes really easy to have manageable uh, data for basically a list of things like possibly enemy templates or item templates within your game and to reference that from other scripts. And as long as these files remain intact inside of your game project, you don't go ahead deleting them or anything, um, this data should stay there properly. Um, now, one thing I do want to reemphasize, though, is it's not a good idea to go ahead and change the values in here while the game's actually running because there'll be an inconsistency between the editor where values that change in the game while the editor is running will actually be saved to the asset file directly. But when the game is built and exported, those same changes won't be reflected in these asset files because it's already been built into a game. So probably stay away from that, but scriptable objects become a really good tool for having data that you can use when the game loads um, to start formulating things such as a shop inventory or the details of a enemy that you spawn on screen. So we'll be getting into that more in the next video where we start creating the actual shop UI, referencing the shop and the game items that exist inside here. Um, in order to create a decent shop experience, we can sell items to the player and we'll actually have an inventory which will reference these same game objects or game items or instances of the game items that the player can use throughout his adventures. So that's going to be it for this video, just giving you guys a little bit more information about scriptable objects and their applications. I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my next Unity video.